Okay, so I just downloaded the new Blender 2.83, and I figured this would be a great time to show uh, some hard surface techniques that I've learned along the way. Some I've found out myself, others I've learned from various sources and videos online, but I'm going to cram a whole bunch of them into this one video, and hopefully you learn something useful. All right, so let's get started with the first one, which is creating pipes. So I'm going to delete my default cube. I'm going to add Shift A to get the Add menu, add a cylinder. And I'm gonna bump this up from 32 to 64 vertices so it's a little bit smoother. There we go. Now I'm going to uh, press number one to go up to a side view and go into edit mode with tab, shift Z to make it a little bit of a taller cylinder. And I'm going to zoom into this top corner. I'm gonna show you how to basically bend this pipe at a perfect angle and give a give it a nice pipe looking shape. So we're gonna use our 3D cursor tool over here and anywhere you left click drops your 3D cursor and we're gonna put it right on the corner of the pipe, not in the inside, but just on the outside of that corner. Now we do need to have this top face selected, so I'm gonna use faces, right click, if that's how your blender is set up. Uh, mine is set up for a right click select. That's just what I've gotten used to. So uh, once we've got this top face selected, I'm gonna go back to that side view with number one. And now we're ready to bend this face 90 degrees. So use the spin tool. And once it's selected, go over to your tool setting here and let's uh, change the axis to Y. Now, depending on what angle you are, you know, what direction, you're going to need to change the angle. But for now, from a side view, Y will bend it this way. It basically bends that face based on how many steps we have in our settings over here on the right. And it will make the curve for us. It saves us a lot of time. So I'm going to make this step 16. If I hold control, it snaps onto perfect angles. Isn't that nice? So I'm going to leave it right there. Now, look, we still have this face selected. So I pre if I press E... I can extrude this that way. And now we've made a pipe. Let's do that on the bottom one. So right click, number one, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Drop my 3D cursor right there. Click and drag this while holding control. There, zoom out. I'm gonna extrude this roughly about the same amount as I did the top one. And there we go. If you wanna make this like a handle or a, some kind of fastened pipe to some surface, you can select these two faces. Press E and press enter. Don't move the mouse because we're gonna drag this out. Oh, change your origin to individual origins. That way we can scale this extruded face, make it larger and then E again, right there. Voila, you've got a handle or a pipe or something cool. Okay, I'm gonna delete my pipe. And before I start the next technique, I'm gonna recenter my 3D cursor to the middle by pressing Shift C. Now, wherever your 3D cursor is, that's where the next object will be placed when you create a new object or mesh. So let's start with the next one, Shift A, Mesh, and Cube. This next technique is a mirror modeling technique. This is how I start a lot of my meshes uh, with the cube and a mirror modifier. So first, let's go to Edit Mode, Tab, Control R to make a loop cut. Press Enter and then Enter again. Make sure you don't move your mouse after that first Enter because you'll slide your loop cut up and down. We don't want to do that. We want it to be right in the middle. So Enter, Enter will give you one loop cut right in the middle. Okay, what we're going to do next is delete half of the cube so that the mirror modifier can do its job and make the other half for us. So with face selected, let's grab one face and do Control Plus to expand the uh, selection and then delete faces. There we go. Now we have one half of the cube and it's open. That's good. We don't want a face there. Now let's go to our wrench, which is our modifiers. Press add modifier and select mirror. Now we don't see anything. That's because the modifier is mirroring along the X axis, which is not helpful because we did it the other way. So unselect X and select Y. There. Now we're ready to start modeling one half of the cube. Whatever we do to this half is going to be mirrored on the other half which is a huge time saver and is really the only way to go if you're going to be modeling things that are symmetrical, uh, you know, hard surface stuff, sci-fi stuff, spaceships, you, know, you name it, it all starts with a mirror modifier if it's going to be cut in half. You can actually use it double, you can mirror on X and Y, make one corner, and then everything you do to that one corner quarter piece will be duplicated by four and copied across the X and Y corners. And again, you're doing a little bit of work and it's doing the rest of it for you. And I love using the mirror modifier. Next is we're going to add rings to a cylinder with a very easy trick I discovered. Let's add another cylinder, shift A, 
make a cylinder. Let's zoom in a little bit. Go to edit mode with tab. Now we're going to do another control. Now we're going to do another loop cut like we did earlier. Let's do two of them. So control R, press the plus button to increase the number. You can use plus or minus to add more loop cuts and enter. Enter again because I don't want to move them around. Now here's the weird trick. We're going to bevel these, but because this is on a flat face all the way around, it's going to just add additional loop cuts right next to the ones we just made. It's basically going to duplicate these loop cuts into two or three or four, whatever we want. So control B for bevel. Look at that. Now it's making more loop cuts. We can increase the bevel, which will really just add more loop cuts next to where we did it. But for this trick, I'll, I'm going to go back to just one with the bevel. So let's press OK, click, or you can press Enter. Now here we're going to turn these into extruded rings all the way around. So press E, Enter, switch to face select mode, and now we're going to scale these out with S. Now make sure that you're on individual origin. If you're in median, then watch this. It scales it out based on the center point, which is in the middle of these two. We don't want that. We just want them to go straight out. So individual origin, face select with these rings selected, and you can scale these out just a little bit like that. Or I can... Uh, Bevel this, E, enter, scale it down. You can add a whole bunch here. Watch this. There we go. Bevel these just a little bit there. E, enter, and S to scale them out. Cool, huh? Very useful for making pipes, lightsabers, all kinds of ribbed and ringed pieces, and gives them lots of nice fine detail to increase the photorealism. Okay, this next trick is going to apply to this mesh, so I'm not going to delete this just yet. I'm going to smooth this out. See how we can see these faces? We can see all the edges and lines. It's not smooth. Uh, we want to smooth that out, but we don't want to get rid of the parts that do need to be sharp, which is these 90 degree edges. So we're going to press spacebar for the search function and just type in smooth. Now click on shade smooth. Now the smooth parts are smooth, but the sharp parts are smooth too, and we don't want that. So let's bring back the parts that we want them to be sharp by going down to the little triangle vertices icon here and expand the normals panel and click auto smooth. So what this is doing is any angle, uh, I think it's below 30 degrees, will be smoothed out, but anything over it will be hard. So you may need to play with this based on your mesh, but normally 30 degrees works for almost everything. And uh, now even though this is kind of a low poly cylinder, it looks smooth. So we're saving memory, we're saving processing power, but visually it's gonna show as a perfectly smooth round cylinder without having thousands of faces added around the edges. And the edges that we want to be sharp are nice and sharp. All right, again, I'm gonna continue on the same mesh for this next technique. I'm gonna show you how to add kind of grippy teeth or edges along a cylinder, uh, which can be used for gears or grips of various kinds. So I'm gonna grab this bottom face, I'm just gonna move it down along the Z axis so we have more room. Now in face select mode, if I hold alt and right click, it grabs all the faces around here. So once you have all these faces selected, we're gonna press I for inset. You may, have, you may need to press it twice, but we wanna to get to this individual inset. So each face now has an inset on it. Once you get it to where you want it, you can uh, click or press enter. And now we're ready to extrude these to give a nice, uh, like as a kind of a grip or gear teeth look. So you can uh, go to Extrude individual, press E, and then drag your mouse out a little bit. You can do a lot if you need to, like looks like an air vent on a car. But I like to use this technique for just kind of like a subtle inset or an outset like that. Now we've got these little faces all over it. Looks like a grip or a gear or something interesting. You can take it a step further by beveling these so that they're not perfectly sharp. So if I go back to tab, look, they're still selected and that saves me a lot of time. <laughs> Just press control B and very carefully, you can hold shift if you need to. You can drag this out, maybe add a few, uh, seg add a few steps with the plus button to make them smooth. If you hold shift and drag like that, it, it drags them with a, a more finer precision. And that looks very nice right there. Now, if you want to make gears, there is a really cool add-on in Blender for making gears. Uh, I, I suggest using that, but um, I'm going to show you how to make um, one more specific kind of gear here. So I made a circle, go into edit, press F to fill it, enlarge it, I inset to make an inset, delete this face in the middle. Now we've got this empty kind of ring of uh, faces. It's flat. I'm going to select all with A and E to extrude it up. Okay. Now I'm going to alt click this inside ring 
takes a few times to get it. There we go. Got all the inside faces. Now I can press I to inset it, individual insets. There we go. And then E and watch. They're going to extrude outwards along their normal, which happens to be inwards towards the center. Um, I can even like scale these if I go to normal here. I can scale these along their Y axes, which makes it kind of interesting. There we go. We got a cool gear or a Stargate or something interesting going on there. So uh, yeah, inset and extrude on a circular range of faces can make a lot of great effects. All right, next technique, I'm going to show you how to punch a hole through something without using the Boolean operation. So I'm going to add a cube. I'm going to uh, zoom in a little bit. Now watch this. I'm going to grab these two faces, holding shift to select multiple faces, and I'm going to inset them. Now, if I want to connect these two uh, faces to basically turn them into a hole through the cube uh, without using the Boolean operation, we can do that by using bridge. So press space for search and just type in bridge. Bridge the edge loops. And there we go. It connects them just like that. Pretty cool. Next, I'm going to show you how to duplicate a whole bunch of objects around a center point, which is great for things like bolts or uh, small details like screws and things like that. So I've got this kind of pipe thing going down with a base. We're going to make a quick six-sided bolt by doing shift A circle. And down here, type in six vertices. Tab F. Now I can't see it because it's in the middle there. <laughs> uh, there it is. If you get out of tab, you can see it. Let's drag it out here and move it up a little bit. It's too big, so let's uh, shrink it and then extrude it downwards. And there we go. We've kind of got a hexagonal uh, head of some kind of bolt. I'm going to bevel this top edge to make it smooth. There we go. That's good enough for me for this example. Now, this is one bolt. I'm going to copy it all the way around a circle. So first, we need to set up our center point, which is going to be our 3D cursor. To do that, we can select this pipe, which is basically the center, right, the axis, and um, do Shift S. And down here on the bottom, cursor to select it. So that puts our 3D cursor right where the selected object is, which is the pipe. Now, let's uh, very carefully right click or select your bolt object without moving the 3D cursor, and we're going to copy it all the way around. So to do that, change your origin point to 3D cursor, which is in the middle. Now look, if I rotate, look, it's rotating not based on the bolt, but based on the 3D cursor, and this is good. Now, let's do six copies of this bolt around the pipe. Now, if you divide 360 by six, you get 60. Now, to duplicate this bolt, you could use Shift D to make a duplicate object, but that object will be disconnected from this original bolt. So if we make any changes to the mesh or we add a material to one bolt, all the other bolts will need to do more work for all the bolts, and it'll be the same work, which is dumb. So we're gonna do Alt D instead to make a linked copy. So Alt D and Enter. Now we're going to rotate this uh, RZ, which is rotate on the Z axis, 60. There we go. Now you got to do this a few times. <laughs> With some practice, you'll get fast at it. But uh, here we go. I'm going to go from a top view. This will make it a little bit easier. It'll actually save us a step. Now all we need to do, we need to uh, make the copy. So Alt D and Enter. R negative 60. Alt D, Enter. R negative 60. And keep going. There we go. So we just Alt D duplicated this and we rotated it along the Z axis 60 degrees, which gives us all six of these. Now, the reason why I like Alt D is because, look, if I make a material on one of these, it's going to make it on all of them because they're all linked. And that is a huge time saver. Even if I uh, edit the mesh, like watch, if I make like a inset thing like that, they're all edited. And uh, yeah, lots of time saved. All right, this next technique, I'm going to show you how to make a cool sci-fi panel with some depth with relatively a little amount of work. So let's add a flat plane by going Shift A and plane. Let's make it big. So S2, which scales it up to maybe again, S2 again. All right, now we're going to add some uh, lines along this. So let's do Control R plus, 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 and maybe on this side, a different amount. There we go. Now we're going to grab some of these lines. So holding shift and right clicking on a few of these random lines, we can kind of trace uh, some different paths. Don't let them intersect with each other. Make sure that they stay separate from each other. There. I think that's as much as I can do with these amount of cuts I have. Now, once we have these edges selected, remember, make sure you're in edge select mode up here. I'm going to do control B to bevel them. Now, I don't want a whole bunch of uh, segments like that, so I'm going to press minus. 
So I'm beveling just one segment worth. Now hold shift and make this bevel very small. There we go. Now delete and delete the faces you just made. And look at that, we've got this nice cutout, but wait, there's more. Go to the modifier, add modifier and use solidify and zoom in and you'll see the beauty that you just made. Uh, three dimensional panels with some depth and all you did was delete some faces and this is technically a flat plane that you can do more stuff with, but the solidify modifier is doing the thickness and you can control the thickness by turning up this fader and look at that. It turns your flat plane into a thick, you know, three-dimensional face. If you want to take this a step further and uh, give some more fine detail to this, you can do add modifier again and choose bevel. Now put your bevel, let's collapse our solidify, put your bevel at zero, hold shift and slowly drag up from zero and you can get like 0 0.005 or something real small. If you want to round those edges, you can add another segment and there we go. We don't have any harsh edges anymore because one of the tips to photorealism in your 3D renders is to pretty much never have a completely hard edge like that, um, unless it's like a blade or a diamond or something. Other than that, even hard surface objects generally have some amount of uh, softness to the edge. It just makes it more appealing and realistic. So there we go. All right, my final tip, I'm gonna show you how to use hierarchy to basically make what could be a robotic arm or any number of other objects. I'm gonna speed this part up a little bit. All right, so here we go. We've got three joints and a wrist, I guess. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use parenting to basically make a hierarchy of this robot arm without using any bones and it will be basically opposable. So let's start from the top down. Let's start from the, the outermost extremity, which is gonna be the wrist. So select it, then shift select the wrist joint, control P, parent and keep transform. Now we're gonna move on the way, all the way down, select the wrist joint, select the forearm, control P and enter. Select a forearm, select the elbow joint, control P. Select the elbow joint and the upper arm, P. Select the upper arm and the shoulder, control P, enter. There we go. So look, if I select my shoulder joint and move this, everything's connected because they're parented. Or I can just move this one. Or I can move this one. Now, next tip, which applies to this and some other things, is we're gonna limit the rotation so that it only rotates the right way. So the correct way for this wrist joint to rotate is along the Y axis. So I'm gonna lock the others. If you go to your object tab here, click the little padlock there and there. So we don't want it to rotate on X or Z, only Y. So I just press R and it can only rotate on one axis. So there we go. Same with the others, lock these and the shoulder, lock those. So now I just do R and I can pose this thing however I want. You can animate it very easily. Um, I'm actually working on a project right now that has a very similar robotic arm that does some really cool stuff. And I use the same technique to save myself a lot of time. And the best part of all, no bones or rigging required. All right, well, that's it for this video. Thanks so much. If you have any questions, comments, or additions, let me know in the comments. And let me know which of these techniques is your favorite in the comments. Thanks for watching and have a great week.